Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis Professional 2022 tutorial brought to you by the Civil Engineering Essentials channel. Well, in this video, we are going to take a look on the preferences and the job preferences that are available in Autodesk Robot. Now to start, we are going to choose the building design template just to open Autodesk Robot up. For the general graphical user interface, there is a different video linked above. However, today we're going to take a look on the preferences and job preferences. To access those, you should go to the Tools menu and select Preferences or Job Preferences. Alternatively, you could click on the wrench toolbar here. Now, if you select the Preferences, all those options are basically options that control the way the software looks but have little to no effect to the model. Well, the first tab is Languages, basically, where you can choose if you want to have a different language than the US English language. You can choose German. For general parameters, well, the recently used structures are basically how many entries you see when you click on the file, how many last structures you see. Active undo option is something we definitely want. Backup means that <clears throat> robots prepares backups at regular intervals. Uh, use local copy of network files. Well, this is if you access network files, will cache one network file locally. Automatic save every is uh, an automatic saving feature at Autodesk Robot. It's good to have it. Also, there is a possibility to remind you of saving. There is the tip of the day, which is a pop-up that tells you uh, some useful tips about Autodesk Robot. I'm just going to go take this away. The object inspector is basically this. Calculate an edit field is an annoying thing, and I totally um, recommend you remove it. I will show you what I mean by this. You see, if you double-click on a text box, well, usually in all other softwares, if you double-click a text, it should highlight the entire text. However, in Autodesk Robot, if you double-click a text, it opens this calculator to calculate stuff. Now, this is really annoying because we are used to double-clicking stuff to select them all. To disable this feature, you could go to Preferences and remove Calculator and Edit Fields. Well, what happens now if you double-click something? It just highlights it exactly how we want it to be. Now, uh, for the view parameters, it's basically how fast or how well detailed or not it is. Now, this is something I suggest you keep as is. Desktop settings is about the themes. Well, you can choose any theme you want. Well, if you choose dark, for example, then my entire screen goes dark. However, I'll stick to the light blue, or actually it's called deep blue. Uh, going on, for toolbars and menus, this is basically how the toolbars are large, small, special, standard. I'll just leave it as it is. Printout parameters control how things look like in the printout. For example, the fonts, the symbols, whatever. Now, those are things I will talk about later when we start having printouts. For now, let's just ignore it. Advanced is stuff about calculations. This is highly specialized and, well, if you want me to explain them, uh, comment on the video below and I would gladly do that. Uh, I will just leave it as it is, basically. And that's it. That's the preferences of Autodesk Robot. Now, what about the job preferences? Well, this is where the fun starts. This is something that you should prepare. Uh, for a file and just save the file as a template for you. Now, if you click on Job Preferences, now whatever you do here will affect your modeling. After you finish doing your preferences, instead of saving the preferences only for this file, you can save the parameters as defaults, which means that whatever you do here, when you click Save Current Parameters as Defaults, is going to be the default that robot will use for any model. So I recommend you do that once you finish preparing your preferences. The preferences start with units and formats, and there is a very quick method of basically selecting metric versus imperial units. If this is basically a preset, if you click metric, then a lot of units are going to be set to metric-friendly units, and if you cl click on imperial, then the preset is going to be imperial. However, you might be interested in configuring the units yourself. So if you want to do that, you click on this plus button, which opens all the units and all the options for those units. Let's take a look on them one by one. Now you can see you're seeing foot and inch. Now I don't know about you, but I'm an SI uh, metric guy, so I'll just click on metric just to quickly switch the preset to metrics, and you can see that uh, happening immediately. Now before I start, I'm going to save the parameters as default and continue my journey. Now the structure dimensions are the dimensions of the structure in general. Well, uh, well, you can see that by the power of video editing, I was able to define a very quick structure here, which is a beam up with forces applied, point loads, moments, and so on. I just want to show you the units and formats, formats in action. Now, first off, you can see the units being on the uh, right 
left-hand side, as you can see here, you can see the units in kilonewton meter for distributed loads, kilonewton multiplied by meter for moments, and kilonewton for point loads. Now, if you go to the dimensions here, the structure dimensions are the dimensions of the elements themselves. The length of an element, the height of an element is a structural dimension. And it's in meter, and you can see that there is some numbers here. Now, let's take a look on this 5, as you can see here. This 5 is 5.00. This is a structure dimension. If you increase the numbers of the decimal place and hit on OK, you can see that the number of decimal places have changed. So what I want to say here is that these numbers are basically controlling uh, how many figures you want to have of the decimal place. You can even go to e power, which means that you will have numbers in the scientific notation with 10 to the power x or whatever. So if you click on this, you will see 5 point dot 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 times 10 to the power 0 because it's basically 5. Now, uh, let's put this back to our default, which is 2 points. Now, this is in meter. You can actually change, change it in foot if you want, which will give you the equivalent in feet. Or you can change it in millimeters, which will give you the dimension in millimeters. It's pretty fun. Now, I will just keep it for meters. Section dimensions, the dimensions of sections, if I click on the section, for example, I'll just choose a section here. You can see the section dimensions are actually in centimeter. Now, it depends on the country you're working in. Some people like to have the section dimensions in millimeter. So if you select here millimeter and maybe have no decimal places, so okay, then you will see it automatically uh, converted your dimensions to millimeters. And that's the beauty of robot. It was 30 centimeters and now it's 300 millimeters. Perfect. Section properties are basically inertia and area and stuff like that. Now, if your section dimension is millimeter, then your section properties should be in millimeter. Of course, this doesn't mean only millimeter. This means millimeter and millimeter square and millimeter power 4, etc. Steel connections are something for steel connections, basically, and they are in millimeter. Diameter for RC bars are also in millimeter. Reinforcement areas could be in millimeter square or in centimeter. It depends. The structure dimensions are in meter. I forgot to switch that. And those are basically the units I will be using for dimensions. Now, of course, you're asking, okay, what about forces? Well, here is the tab for forces. You have three units only. You have the force unit, you have the moment unit, and you have the stress unit. Now, if you click on the force unit, there are quite some interesting forces. Now, in some regions of the world, people use actually tons to design their structures instead of kilonewtons. So you can select uh, the unit to be ton if you want. I'll just keep it for kilonewtons because I want to be SI compatible. And there are two points of the decimal. I mean, I've explained this. This decimal place and this scientific notation thing will be the same everywhere. Now, if you, for some reason, want to use newtons, for example, let's switch to N and say OK, then what happens is you see this 5, it will become 50. And let's take a look. 5,000, sorry. Uh, the 5 I've applied became 5,000, and the 10 I applied became 10,000, and the units here became Newton meter. Um, let's get back to Newton meter. Now, for the moment, uh, there are two units, so to modify them, you should click on the Browse button and select your force unit alone and your length unit alone. Stresses is the same, as the name suggests. You have the force unit and the area unit. If you keep it in mega newton per meter square, this will give you a mega pascal, and this is basically the unit of stress we all should be familiar with. Uh, other units are basically, as the name suggests, whatever other units you have. The displacements are in millimeters, the deflections. The rotation as in data, which is basically what you input is in degree, and what you get as an output is the radian. Well, I don't know, I'll just keep both of them, either degree or radian, or just leave them like this. I'll leave them like this. Temperature in Celsius, you can choose Fahrenheit, weight in kilograms, and mass in kilograms. Now, I know what you're thinking, weight is not in kilograms, but yeah, well, some people call it kilograms, so I'll just leave it like this. Dimensions, dimensionless quantities have no dimension, obviously, and that's it. Unit addition, uh, you can actually see how robot um, converts different units. For example, if you choose kilogram, you see that one kilogram is going to be 9.80665 Newton. Now, you can change this to 9.81 if you want. I highly recommend not to touch those units and formats. Moving on to the material section, um, you can see that there are different databases upon which you can choose. There is the American database, and you will see all types of steel that are typical to the American codes of design for steel and for concrete. 
We can, for example, choose the uh, database Deutsch, which means the German database, <clears throat> and then you can see all the types of concrete used in Germany with, of course, the predefined um, material characteristics. Now, I highly recommend that you choose the database that is conforming with the design code you're using, meaning if you're designing using the American ACI code, for example, for concrete, then it's highly recommended that you use the American material database for such uh, design problems. Similarly, if you're using the DIN or DIN code, which is the old German code, or the Euro code, the new German code, with, with the German annex, then I highly recommend that you would be using the <coughs> German database. There's even a Euro code database. You can see that they are very similar to the German um, materials. Anyway, I'm gonna choose the American database and use it for my job preferences. Now you might be interested in modifying the material characteristics of those preset materials or even add your own material. This can be done via the modification button. So if you click on that, you will open this form in which you can select the type of material, steel, concrete, aluminum, timber, and other materials. And of course, you can modify the existing materials and save, or you can add a new material and, uh, for example, you can say here, uh, for my concrete, and add this, and then modify this accordingly. So you have your my concrete now here, and you can choose the material characteristics you would like to have in your own concrete. Now, if you click on databases, you see all those sections and vehicle and load and soil databases. You can modify them by opening the plus button and checking out those different databases. Yeah, another piece of advice I have for you here is to choose databases that are conforming to the codes you are using. For vehicle loads, you have the ASHTO. For standard load, you have the ESCE. You see that I'm using the American codes because my regional settings are American. <clears throat> for the soil, you have different types of, of uh, codes that you can choose. For example, here for reinforcing bars, there are two possible choices the ACI 380 uh, version 2008 and the metric version of that code. Now, honestly, you don't need to switch to metric if you are using metric units, but it's recommended because the steels and the other types of uh, reinforcement and other calculations are better to be used in metric if your units are metric. Now, we will talk about design of reinforced concrete beams in other videos, but for now, I'll just leave it as it is. I will revisit this later. Now saying, assume that you want a different reinforcing bars database. You can click on plus to open the databases and you can choose any database you want. You can even choose the Eurocode database if you want and this would load the reinforcing bars that are according to the Eurocode. This is the case for all those databases. So for example, for vehicle loads, you can add with a plus button the Eurocode for the vehicle loads and any other code you wish to have. Now I will leave it as it is, I will not change it. The next bullet point is about design codes. Now if you click on that, you can expand to check out the loads. Or you can just open the design codes and change whatever you would like to have. Now you see there is steel and aluminum structures, there is the ANSI, AISC code. <clears throat> you can switch different versions if you like, there is a 2016 currently. And there is for steel connections a code, uh, there is for timber structures, for reinforced concrete structures, for geotechnical. Let's say reinforced concrete structures. You have the ACI and the ICI metric. You see this M and there is a metric appendix here. Let's say you want a different code, not the ACI code. Well, you can click on more and uh, it opens the database and you can choose any code you would like to have. You can see millions of codes and you can choose any code you wish to have. You can choose the Euro code with a national annex of the UK, for example. So basically you can choose any code you would like to have, even if you want to have archaic codes. Now, I will leave this as is, structural analysis. Now for this, I highly recommend not to touch anything. This is a finite element method related stuff. For example, the way of solving system of equations, because if you know finite element, you know that you are going to produce a stiffness matrix and solve a huge number of concurrent equations uh, simultaneously. <clears throat> and this is done via some iterative tools. For example, Langshaw's uh, method or by conjugate gradient method. There is a lot of details here. I highly recommend not to touch those things, except if you know or are quite experienced in the finite element method. Now, uh, you can also change the settings for modal seismic. Maybe I will double check those settings later and show you exactly what they mean in a dedicated, vid a dedicated video for nonlinear analysis in the future. For web parameters, that's not a lot to be honest. 
basically it's just a, for example, results are saved in an external file. The synchronization should not be switched off because if you switch off the synchronization, if you run an analysis, the table will not refresh until you close and reopen it for the meshing. This is an important part of Autodesk Robot. Autodesk Robot has a fantastic mesher uh, that is able to mesh planes and solids quite efficiently. And we will talk about this a lot during our video uh, tutorials. However, I will leave them as it is. To wrap this video up, um, basically, there are two things or three things you want to do with your preferences. The first thing I recommend to do with your preferences is to go to the general parameters and remove the calculate and edit fields because the double clicking is for selecting, not for launching a calculator. And the second thing is you would be visiting your units and formats and your meshing a lot. As for the databases and uh, design codes, this is something you will visit maybe once just to set your settings and then that's it. And once you're done with your job preferences, you should save your current parameters as defaults, which will basically mean that any future robot document or model you launch or start is going to inherit those default parameters that you have defined here. And that's it. That's all you need to know about job preferences and software preferences. I hope that was beneficial to you. If you have enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. This is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we will see you in future videos.